on this video I want to do a couple more examples with trig substitutions. So once again we've now gone through several of these examples but this strategy of picking a strategic substitution for our x is very handy when we have integrals of the form a squared minus x squared, a squared plus x squared, x squared minus a squared, specifically when they're under a square root, but actually anything of those forms, and we could try this strategy to simplify the integral down to something that we'll be able to integrate. So if it's of the form a squared minus x squared, we're going to use x equals a sine of theta, if it's of the form a squared plus x squared, we're going to use x equals a tangent of theta. If it's of the form x squared minus a squared, we're going to use x equals a secant of theta. And again, we do have some kind of specific restrictions on the domain on that one based on what is given for x, or we have to think about it in two different ways. Okay, so let's jump into our examples. All right, so we're taking a look at the integral of dx over the square root of x squared minus 9. So this is definitely of the form x squared minus a squared, where our a is 3 squared. So we've got a equals 3. And in this particular case, we're specifically told that x is greater than 3. So x is greater than a. So as a reminder, I'll go back to that screen just one second ago. As a reminder, if we have something of that form, x squared minus a squared, what we're going to do is we're going to substitute a secant of theta. And for x greater than or equal to a, our theta is going to be between 0 and pi over 2. So that's the substitution we're going to use. I'm going to go right into it on the example but I just wanted to show the strategy sheet one more time where that um, substitution is coming from and the reason is because it will simplify down really nicely when we get over into the root okay let's take a look all right so we are going to let me grab a different color we're going to let our x be equal to 3 secant of theta for theta between 0 and pi over 2, inclusive of 0, but not of pi over 2, because it does actually have an asymptote there uh, for the secant of theta. So for our thetas between 0 and pi over 2, now again, that's since our x was greater than 3. So that is why we're picking that particular substitution. My dx is going to be 3. The derivative of the secant is secant theta tangent theta, and we have d theta when we separate the differential. So we're going to make those substitutions and let's see where we end up. So this becomes the integral of, I'm going to go ahead and write it as 1 over the square root of my x is 3 secant of theta. We're going to square that minus 9 times my dx is 3 secant of theta tangent of theta d theta. Now let's see, the whole reason for making that particular substitution was so that this square root will simplify, and it will, because 3 secant of theta squared is 9 secant squared of theta minus 9. I can factor out the 9, and then that secant squared of theta minus 1. And if we remember the little identity, I guess we can come back over here for a second, quick little recall on the identity. We have that fundamental identity that tells me that 1 plus the tangent squared of theta equals the secant squared of theta. So the tangent squared of theta is the secant squared of theta minus 1. So we're using that little identity. This becomes just 9 times the tangent squared of theta. And that's all under a square root. I'm going to put that back in red again. I'm writing this in red because this is sort of underneath my square root right there. That was all under a square root. So my integral becomes 1 over 3 times the absolute value of the tangent of theta times 3 secant of theta tangent of theta d theta. Now right here, this absolute value of the tangent of theta if we remember here that on our restriction up here, when we made that substitution, that trig substitution, we were making the substitution and restricting our secant curve so that at 1, it was 1 to 1, and also because of the restriction on x between 0 and pi over 2. So we know that that tangent of theta, if the angle is between 0 and pi over 2, the tangent is positive right there. We know that this is positive, the tangent 
of theta is greater than zero, greater than or equal to zero, on the interval from zero to pi over two. So we can drop, what that does is that allows us to drop the absolute value. And look at what happens when we drop the absolute value. We get a nice simplification. This becomes the integral of one over three times the tangent of theta, but we have a three secant theta, tangent theta up top here, d theta, that one of those tangents cancels, that three cancels, and our integral becomes just the integral of the simply the secant. We don't even have any constants left. I had to double check that. Look at that one more time. We end up with just the integral of the secant. Well, if that's all we have, we proved that back in the last section when we were doing trig integrals. We proved, so I don't have to reprove it here, proved during our trig integral section. So we don't need to reprove it. Once we've proven it, I mentioned when we proved that, that this would be a useful integral, one worth probably committing to memory. So we'll go right into its form. The integral of the secant of theta is just the natural log of the secant of theta plus the tangent of theta plus c, since this is an indefinite integral. So we've found our integral. The problem is that it's not in the form we need it in yet. Right now it's in terms of theta and we need it in terms of x. So this is where we go back and now we build our triangle. So let's come back over here. Our triangle is actually gonna be in the first quadrant because our theta is from zero to pi over two. So we're gonna go ahead and draw our angle and our triangle, our little reference triangle here. Here is our angle theta, and we know that x equals 3 secant of theta, so that means that the secant of theta must be equal to x over 3. But the secant is 1 over the cosine, so since the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, the secant is the hypotenuse over the adjacent side. So we will label our triangle, so the hypotenuse is x of our triangle, and the adjacent side is 3 which means the remaining side can be found using the Pythagorean theorem. So it'll be the hypotenuse squared minus three squared. So X squared minus three squared. And then we'll take the square root doing that kind of quickly in my head, but this becomes X squared minus nine on the opposite side. So again, in this triangle, this is our adjacent opposite and hypotenuse. And so now I can use that ratio to determine, well, we know what the secant is. The secant is x over 3. We've already determined that based on how we defined the x at the very beginning, how we defined x in order to make the substitution. But the tangent of theta, so we know the secant of theta, of course, is just x over 3. But the tangent of theta using this triangle, that gives me kind of a nice way to do it, using this triangle, the tangent is going to be the opposite over the adjacent, so that's the square root of x squared minus 9 over 3. And now I can come back, and I'm going to go ahead and erase that. We proved that during our trig integral section. That's where we got it and how we did it so quickly. This becomes the natural log. Now the secant is x over 3 plus the tangent is the square root of x squared minus 9 over 3, and we are adding an integration constant plus c. And that is how we could write this answer. I like that form a lot. There's a little bit of simplification that we could do, and I'll talk about how we could play around with that simplification a little bit, but that form is perfectly acceptable. That's a great form. We've got it simplified. It's in terms of x, right? We used our reference triangle and went backwards through our trig sub here in order to write this back in terms of x. Now, if we wanted to, we could find a common denominator. I mentioned I would show you the algebra here. We could write this as the natural log of x plus the square root of x squared minus 9. This is over 3 plus c. This is now a quotient, so we could even write that if we wanted to as x plus the square root of x squared minus 9 minus the natural log of the absolute value of 3 plus c. And here's something you'll sometimes see problem solvers do. Sometimes you'll see this constant just kind of disappear, but look at this. When you take negative natural log of 3 and you add it to a constant, it turns out that that is itself a constant. So I don't go through that process and separate that logarithm when I'm doing my work but I will show you that it could be done. So this is equivalent to writing this form as well, where we've pulled that natural log of three, 
we pulled apart the logarithm using rules of logs and then we we combined the natural log of three with the constant and that of course is also still just a constant so we could write it that way i don't like it that way of course i've written my answer and i highlighted the form i like to i like to work with so there we go let's do one more let's take a look at this guy so if we had the integral from one to four of dt over the square root of t squared minus 2t plus 10. Now this is not yet in the form x squared plus a squared or x squared minus a squared or a squared minus x squared. It's not in one of those forms yet. So what should I do? Well, this is one where we've got a little bit of algebra to do first. And the algebra we want to do here is we want to complete the square. So let's get in here and let's complete the square. So if we're going to look at this problem before we get into any trig set, this is now we're getting into really sort of layering our different integration strategies. So I'm going to write this as one over. I'm going to put my dt out here. I'm going to separate this a little bit. This is t squared minus 2t plus 10. It doesn't factor. It's not a perfect square in its current form, but I can create a perfect square. I take that negative 2, I divide by 2, it becomes negative 1, and then I have to square that, and so of course that would give me 1, so that's what I need to add. So I add 1, but if I'm adding 1 right there, I also have to subtract 1, because I can't change my integral. I have to keep what's under that square root exactly the same. So if I add 1 under the square root, I'm also going to subtract 1 under the square root, and that now becomes the integral from 1 to 4 of 1 over, now I've created a perfect square. This is t minus 1 squared plus 9 dt. And now I've created something of the form. It's not exactly right, but it's a squared, it's x squared plus a squared or a squared plus x squared. So we have something of that form right now. Now, it's not quite there yet, so I'm going to actually do a u substitution to get it nicely into that form. So now what I'm going to say before I go any further, just to clean it up, I'm going to say let u equal t minus 1, and then du is just 1 times dt when I separate the differential. So du is just dt, and I'm making some substitutions here, so let's keep in mind that these were x equals 1 and x equals 4. Oh, I'm sorry, that we were using t. I'm so used to x. We were using t equals 1 and t equals 4. So this is going to be the integral of 1 over, I'm going to make that substitution, this becomes u squared plus 9 du when I make the substitutions, but I don't want to go back in terms of t now. I'm going to go ahead and stick with my u. So if u is t minus 1, then when t equals 1, u would be 0, and when t equals 4, u would be 4 minus 1, u would be 3. So I'm going to go ahead and make those substitutions so that I don't have to go back in terms of t in the end. I can keep my bounds in terms of u. So I'll switch the bounds over here. u equals 0 it becomes the lower bound, and u equals 3 becomes the upper bound when I make the substitution. Okay. So there was this little earlier step, right, up here, let's just keep in mind, we're doing multiple layers of tools, right, multiple layers of techniques here. We had a quadratic, so we completed the square, then we did some substitution, we got the substitution, and now we're in an integral of this form. So what do I do here? Well, this form is of the form. Let's look at our trig reference sheet. So we've got a u squared plus 9. So what we have here is an a squared plus x squared or an x squared plus a squared. Doesn't matter when we write this one. The order, because they're both positive, doesn't matter if we wrote it in, in this way, x squared plus a squared. So the substitution here is going to be an a times the tangent of theta. So we're going to come in here. And now we're going to use our, now we're going to do trig sub. So our trig sub, we're going to let u be equal to, in this case, this is, of course, 3 squared. So this is u squared plus 3 squared. So our a is 3 times the tangent of theta. And we remember the restriction when we make that is theta needs to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over, posit, negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. So we're within that range of angles for theta. 
when we make that substitution, we are also going to take the derivative and make the substitution for du, so we can get everything in terms of theta. So the derivative of 3 tangent of theta is 3 secant squared of theta, du d theta, so I separate the differential d theta. Now I can make those substitutions, so this is going to become the integral of 1 over, make the substitution uh, in the denominator here, we get 3 tangent of theta squared plus 9, and the du is 3 secant squared of theta d theta. Now we're going to keep simplifying. 3 tangent squared is, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, is 3 times 3, 9. Tangent squared of theta plus 9, factor out the 9, we get tangent squared of theta plus 1. I'm not going to rewrite the identity. At this point, we should be pretty comfortable with the identity that connects tangent and secant. Tangent squared of theta plus 1 is the secant squared, so this is 9 times the secant squared of theta. Now remember, all of that was under a square root, so on my next line, I'm going to take the square root. This is 1 over, we get 3 times the absolute value of the secant of theta and we're multiplying by 3 times the secant squared of theta d theta. Now, right here where I took that square root, let's remember that theta is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Since that is true, the secant is always positive. So we can drop the absolute value and put it in parentheses, and then we can cancel one of these. Let's reduce that now. This now becomes, let's see, the 3 cancels. This becomes the integral of just the secant of theta d theta. Now, we've got the integral simplified. I got going on the integral. I wanted to keep going. I didn't want to lose my momentum there. But we did lose our bounds. So at some point, I stopped writing the bounds. It was right up here. So u was equal to 0 and u was equal to 3. And I didn't write the bounds as I continued. I made the substitution. I made the trig substitution. And I didn't continue my bounds. So we have two choices here. We could integrate, put it back in terms of u, and then evaluate the bounds. Or we could change the bounds. And on this one, I think I'm going to go ahead and change the bounds. Uh, we always have that choice to either go back in terms of the original variable, or in this case, back to the u, or we could change the bounds if it's easy to do so. So let's go ahead and change the bounds. Since we have a definite integral, let's do the work to change the bounds. When u, let's do the lower bound first. When u equals 0, 0 equals 3 times the tangent of theta. So that's asking what angle theta has a tangent of 0 and that would have to be on this range, that would have to be zero. So our lower bound theta is zero. When u equals three, three equals three tangent of theta. So we're asking what angle theta has a tangent of one when we divide both sides by three, and that would have to be on this range. Again, remember, we're looking only on this restricted domain that we, we created that restricted domain in order to make the substitution. And so therefore, what angle has a tangent of 1 between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2? Well, that theta would have to be pi over 4, 45 degree angle. So we've got the upper bound is pi over 4. Now, since I've done that, I don't have to go back in terms of u, or for that matter, in terms of t, the original variable. I've changed my bounds all the way along. So when I did that, now I can integrate. My integral becomes, again, this is one of those useful integrals I mentioned on the last section when we proved these, that these are useful integrals. Um, and again, proven uh, in the last section. So we've, we've already proven these. I'm not going to reprove it. So the integral of the secant, if we don't already have those memorized, uh, probably worth memorizing. The integral of the secant is the natural log of the secant of theta plus the tangent of theta. And we are evaluating that from theta equals 0 to theta equals pi over 4. So it's right at this stage, if I hadn't changed those bounds, that I would, you know, come over here and I would draw my triangle 
and I would make my little reference triangle, right? And I'd have to go all the way back in terms of u, but I don't have to because I changed my bounds and it was a definite integral. So this is the natural log of the secant of pi over four plus the tangent of pi over four minus the natural log of the secant of zero plus the tangent of zero and that becomes the natural log of the absolute value. Uh, the secant of pi over four is just root two over one, plus uh, the tangent of pi over four is one, and the secant of zero is one, and the tangent is zero, and then we're taking the natural log of one, so that is zero. And my final answer here is the natural log. I don't need the absolute value anymore because the square root of two plus one is positive, and that is my answer for this problem and I will get it all on the screen. That is a really great example of combining multiple strategies, which we will be doing. The more strategies we learn, the more challenging um, and in-depth our integrals can become, and we'll get more and more practice as we go.